Shall we? Welcome back to another sunny yet smoggy craptaculous day today. I'm not gonna lie, I might be slightly hungover from the night before, what with a giant fishbowl and splitting it with someone. But the show must go on. Today we're going to take a look at the Rugged Ridge Hurricane Flat Fender Flares. Uh, if you're like me, before you uh, buy something that's well over a hundred dollars you like to uh see as much of it as you can before you make the plunge um whether that be a write-up pictures or video so that's what we're going to do today this isn't going to be anything about installing them um you know any step by step but we will do a full 360 on both sides of the fenders and i'll go over what you get um somewhat what you're going to need for the install and uh just go over briefly go over the install itself uh, but that way we can all be on kind of a level playing field of knowing what we get uh, when you order these now I got these for $2.99 off Amazon right now as of August 20 whatever I know it's not the 25th um, they're on sale for $2.30 um, and if you're just looking for just the slightest push on whether to get them or not stop the video right now before two minutes and go get them um, they are well worth it in my opinion so as we get a closer look while still staying in the shade thank you optical zoom uh, you may ask yourself well is a 300 plus dollar fender flare worth it um, compared to a metal one uh, what are you getting versus what are you losing um, especially in the whole debate between plastic and metal. Well, for me, the decision was quite easy. Um, I had your standard bushwhacker style uh, pocket flares. Uh, you know, the kind that have the bolts, just the, one bolt in each little pocket. Uh, Rugged Ridge makes them, uh, Chinese companies make them. Go on Amazon and there's like five different options. eBay, <laughs> it's even worse. Um, and the quality ranges anywhere between really cheap flimsy plastic to rugged ridges or what I had and they were they were really decent um, but I didn't get the right size for my uh, tire spacing um, back spacing or whatever it's called and every time I hit a good bump or whatnot while um, driving around the Mojave Desert I would chafe up against my fender not just on the edges or in the outer lip but also inside the fender itself they sat pretty low and um, I can bring up some pictures later or probably right now um, my tires would chafe especially when I flexed around the tire right there um, so after two trips and just kind of gnawing away at them so I decided you know what these these are worth a look um, focus there we go. It was definitely worth the look, and I actually really love the design of them, uh, but we'll get more into that later. So, uh, as for your plastic versus metal, uh, there's plenty of debate. You can go look look it up yourself. Uh, we're not going to spend much time into it, other than I, I'm on board on the plastic side because I'm a firm believer of kind of compartment lining, compart. Can't speak. Segmenting your uh, your fields of damage so if I'm going to take a hit on my fender I'd rather the fender flare pop off than the whole fender needing to be replaced and that whole thing anyways let's go ahead and get a better so I know we've been looking at the passenger side tire a lot and we'll move on but I'm just gonna do a flyby uh, what you get is the fender itself you get a trim like most of the other ones um, that's pretty much on you whether you get it right or not you do get a, uh, a new reflector and you end up using the stock light right there. It just goes in and twist. You get the wiring or some extra wire and all the uh, connectors that you need. We'll go over tools in a bit. But you get everything you need to extend pretty much from your stock 
uh, reflector light all the way to out here, plus this, uh, I can't remember what it's called, your plastic, uh, plastic housing, whatever. I'll probably annotate it. Anyways, as you can see, aside from my Jeep being dirty because I use it, it's actually fairly clean. Um, how it attaches is standard uh, nuts and bolts. Well, bolts, and uh, as for the nuts, let's see if I can get us in there. Uh, can't move like that. Um, trying to, maybe. Oops. Focus. Focus. I can't tell. Anyways, um, for the main part, aside from where you're... Uh, nothing wants to work today. Aside from where you have your nut certs from the factory, on mine I have three on the front uh, and three on the back. My front three are towards the back. So these are actually all, pointed the right way, all bolted directly to the Jeep. The rest of them being bolted onto that plastic nut looking thing right there. And uh, you can tighten it with your hand. Uh, it does get a little painful in the back but it's doable and then you also get um, your little decorative nuts these don't do anything uh, other than just add a little style I kind of like it but they are bolted on the back with a tooth focus with a tooth bolt nut on there so uh, you're not going to have any walking out now, I will say this right off the bat, if you are a mall crawler and you like having your Jeep nifty clean, these are not defenders for you. Any water that you get from Morning Dew, you will get an accumulation and you will get dirt, water stains, all that good stuff. For me, I don't care. I actually use this. So, again, you have uh, the ones that direct, bo sorry, bolt directly to the back, focus. And then you have to reach in underneath your uh, fender guard or plastic shielding, housing, whatever. Get your hand in there and uh, tighten the rest of these by hand. Uh, pain in the butt, just like any other fender flare. Then you get your bolts. Uh, this does come all the way up to the, uh, the metal frame, or sorry, the metal body at the top of the Jeep. And it does allow full access and articulation front and back uh, without even touching the fender. So you get that going on for you. Other side, exactly the same. And it does give you that appearance of your lift being a little higher. This is being a uh, 3.5 Rancho lift. And uh, so try not to bump too much again. You can see. It's all the way up to the frame, so whatever you're going to be chafing, not the frame of the body, whatever you're going to be chafing, you're actually going to be chafing against the uh, factory fender itself and not the flares. Again, you get everything you need. Um, your plastic cover, the extender wire, and the uh, connectors. So that's pretty much it. It bolts on. You get your cool little pockets. Honestly, I, I really do like the uh, the appearance of it. I think it modernizes the Jeep or the TJ line just a little bit better. Another thing I really, really like versus some other fat, or flat fenders is the uh, how it contours. You get a lot of angles in this, and it just really kind of complements the TJ itself versus kind of how other fenders... I'm getting a little artsy here, but other fenders will just kind of be there and have their own design. But this one seems to feel natural. I really like the cutout right here versus, uh, let's just say, Red Rock, where they have uh, that little uh, piece of plastic covering up all the way over here. And to me, yeah, now that just looks like 1980s shoulder pads. Anyways, so you get your full articulation when you're disconnected. And again, anything you're going to be chafing against, you're actually going to be hitting against your, uh, your actual metal fender, not the flare itself. 
so you should be able to uh, wheel with these without too much damage. I really do like the uh, the new housing too. I just I dig it. I really dig it. I'm gonna try to keep this quick, but essentially that's what you're looking at when you get these. I hope this uh, this helps out some people in making the decision whether you want them or not. They do get dirty and they do show dirt, but depending on what you want your Jeep for. Okay, let's go take a look uh, at what tools you're going to need for the install and just briefly, briefly go over some stuff. Okay, so just a brief overview on the tools needed um, and some of the components that come with it. Uh, right off the bat, you're going to need a wrench. Um, probably the smallest ones you may have. One fourth, sorry, a uh, quarter, quarter inch, uh, does most of them. And I apologize for the fan, it's really hot. And uh, yeah, I'm not turning that sucker off. Quarter inch is what you're gonna need for your, uh, for your bolts. Uh, you do get these nut certs for any, um, I guess for any of your certs that have already fallen off, rotted off, and taken off, what have you. However, you do not get enough of these to fill up the whole um, fender, any of them. You just get a handful. Uh, I opted not to use them. Uh, if you remember those little nuts, that's pretty much what you get with the dedicated screws. It's all in the instructions. Um, they don't give you any extra screws for mounting the fenders themselves. They just give you the perfect mount. But you do get a little extra pieces here and there. Uh, these are the nuts and bolt that you get for the pockets, the design ones, or the cosmetic ones. Like I said, you get a nut with the teeth on the back, and that just goes in like that onto the uh, plastic that holds in place. You get little um, push caps to fill up any gaps. Um, other than that, I highly recommend um, some pliers like these what for grabbing the plastic nut and holding it in place while you crank down on this little itty bitty wrench to uh, I, it, it looks ridiculous when you when you actually lay it out and um, and see it but that's how it goes the uh, the bolts pretty small uh, it doesn't give you too much access but it gives you just enough to to mount it um, so yeah highly recommend some bent pliers just to go and hold the uh, that nut in place while you do what you need to do. Uh, Phillips screwdriver, optional. Uh, those nuts that are, sorry, the bolts that are holding the fenders in are either uh, quarter inch or Phillips. You can use a socket if you have, or socket wrench, if you have the uh, socket small enough. I, however, don't. That's the smallest one available. So it was manual for me. Um, getting the the uh, cosmetic nuts and bolts in, highly recommend uh, drill or impact wrench if you got it. I lightly just like one or two clicks and then it was done. And just either holding this by hand so you don't over torque anything. You know, once it spins out of your hand, let go. Or with a wrench, just be mindful because you can end up. Uh, torquing it too hard and destroying the plastic behind it. Uh, for wire, doing the wire job, I know some people might be intimidated by thinking, oh my gosh, it's electrical, I don't know what to do. Uh, I, by no means am I an electrician. Uh, my first uh, exposure to it was actually setting up lights. Uh, if you can honestly just follow simple instructions, a pair of wire strippers and a uh, crimper, they sell them as a combo or you know one unit that's gonna be what you need to set it up and you'll be good to go as for the housing reflectors or reflector housing sorry you're just gonna get a small little bolt and a small nut I think it came with washers and you're just gonna you know take what you need screw it on and voila uh, that's gonna be it just that's this is not everything that you get you get a lot more and I threw out the instructions a while ago so you got to bear with me but this is just gonna be your basic overview of tools that you're gonna need or probably want to get the job done and I hope that helped make some decisions whether you want to invest your money in these fenders or not me personally I love them 
Um, yeah, it's a lot of money compared to some of the cheaper Chinese options. And um, I'll be honest, I was kind of hoping another company would pick up that design. Uh, there is one. They're a little different, but they're more expensive and not to my taste. So, yeah, uh, 230 right now as of August, end of August 2017. Uh, now's the time to buy them, I guess. So I, I kind of miss out on 70 bucks, but hey, they're worth it. So that's going to be it for this review. Hope you guys uh, found this useful. If you want to see more reviews like this, um, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to post this all out exactly. Uh, if it's on Amazon, you can find me at Lost EMT on YouTube. Uh, I really don't care about the like button, so do whatever you want. But look forward to more reviews related to cheap and off-roading. Catch you in the next one.